Hi, welcome to the Crates Motel. My name's Conan. In today's video, we're going to think out of the box just a little bit. One of the things that we love about the MPC and not love so much are the limitations it presents us with. But right from my first MPC in 1989, I have always had the attitude that there's a workaround. Let's talk about multiband compression. So if you're used to working in a DAW or with outboard equipment, multiband compression is probably something that you're aware of or something that you've already used. And to briefly explain multiband compression, with a normal compressor, it's wideband, so it will compress the entire signal. And the issue that you can have with that is that the low end will activate the compressor before it even gets a chance to start compressing the highs and the mids. A way that we get around this with a lot of compressors nowadays in DAWs is there'll be a sidechain filter where you can reduce the amount of low end that's actually affecting the compressor. That's not available in the MPC. A multiband compressor can separate the signal into bands. So a typical multiband compressor would be uh, a low, a mid and a high. So you've got three areas that you can basically compress and you have separate controls for each one of those compressors over that frequency range. Examples of how I would use multiband compression when I master for a client, for instance, or I'm mixing for a client, would be that uh, maybe the mid-range needs some gluing and I need to bring it up in the mix slightly. I've got a pre-master, I can't get them to remix it. So by using multiband compression, I can just compress the mid-range and leave the highs and the lows alone and glue it together a little bit and then just compensate with, uh, with volume. Another thing that we do in mastering, for instance, is also DSing, and I don't mean DSing vocals, which is what we're used to doing in mixing, but we DS in mastering quite a lot if the pre-master has been sent to us and the highs are, are a little bit too crispy or tinny. Um, you get that with hi-hats quite a lot, so you will imply a DSer from kind of 8K upwards maybe, depending on the track, it's, it's not always 8K upwards. And uh, you will just compress the, the hats very lightly and, and it, it will naturally get rid of the kind of crispy high end that you might get from hi hats. So why are we talking about multiband compression? Because you know there isn't a multiband compressor in the MPC, there is no DSer in the MPC, there's nothing like that, no dynamic EQ or anything like that, and there's no sidechain filters for the com for the compressors. Now, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of working with the MPC is finding workarounds. And you guessed it, I found a workaround to basically create your own, your own multiband compressor in the MPC. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to start mastering tracks in the MPC. I, I will stick to a DAW to do that for my clients. But just thinking out of the box and, and finding workarounds like this, you can start realising just with a few creative workarounds, that there are so many options available in the MPC. More than what first appears, and that all the tools are there, and you just need to be a bit creative to utilize them in their best way. So I have a pre-master here from one of my clients, uh, Steve Darley, a really, really good house music producer, and I'd master his tracks for him. I've taken a segment of that track. Let's just have a quick listen. Let's take that out, out of mute, put it in solo. This is just the track on its own with nothing, no processing on it whatsoever. It's just a pre-master. Now I'm using the whole track because I think it's going to be the easiest way to demonstrate the technique. If I was to use, you know, just a drum bus or just a vocal, I'm not really going to be able to fully show you what you can do with the technique. So I'm using a, a whole track and we'll make believe that this is a track that's been made in the MPC. And then we're going to apply this to the master bus as such. When I explain, you'll see that it's not actually quite that simple. You do actually have to have some workarounds, which is what I explained earlier on. And that's what we love about the MPC. We love the workarounds. So, as I said, this is the track pre-master completely on its own in solo. Now, I'm just going to take that out of solo and it will go into mute. And what I've done is I've taken the track and I've taken the track three times and I've put it all for each track on a different audio track and I've got one set up for the lows, one set up for the mids, 
on one set up for the highs. On each track, I've applied the same effects chain. We have air kill EQ and we have air compressor. Now the reason why I've used kill EQ, and this is kind of what sparked off my, my thoughts about this, is with kill EQ, when you have multiband compression, on each band you have a crossover where you have the lows will cross over with the midsection and the midsection will cross over with the high section. And that's, that's called a crossover. And on multibands, generally the, the slope of the crossover will be quite harsh, quite steep. And with air kill EQ, the, the sections, the slopes in between each EQ section is steep. So that's when I started thinking to myself, well, hold up a second, this crossover is gonna be very similar to a multiband compressor. So before we go any further, Let's just, we'll just listen to Steve's track again, his pre-master, on its own with no compressing, uh, no compression or any uh, processing whatsoever on it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, when I take it out of solo, it will automatically go into mute and it will play my three different versions that are layered with each other with the processing on it, the air kill EQ and the air compressor. But bear in mind at the moment, there's not actually any compression uh, applied. So the point is, is when I switch from his pre-master on its own to the three tracks that I've got the effects chain on and I've got my multiband compressor set up, it shouldn't sound any different at all. It should sound exactly the same. And it pretty much does. So let's go for it. To start with Steve Dolly's track on its own and then I'm going to take it out of solo, it will go into mute automatically and you'll hear the version of the three tracks layered with the Kill EQ. So as you can hear, there's not any audible difference. And when I actually pulled it up on a frequency analyzer, there was a very, very slight difference. I mean, tiny, tiny difference between the two waveforms with the three tracks laid together compared to the single pre-master on its own. But it's not audible. And, you know, like I said, I'm not gonna be using this technique anytime soon to actually master a track. So the, the difference in the sound is such a small amount that it's not really going to affect you in a real world situation if you're using this technique in the MPC and you want to get it in a ballpark with the multiband compressor. So let's go into a little bit more detail on how I've actually set it up. So we've got the original pre-master in mute now and now we're playing the three tracks layered together. Okay, also bear in mind, as I said from the start, this is a pre-master, it's not had any other processing on it whatsoever. To give you a quick idea, when I did actually master this track, it was very well mixed to start with. Steve's stuff generally is, I don't really have to do very much to it, which is great for a mastering engineer. Um, I tightened up the low end a little bit, and I brought out some clarity around about 5K, and I did have to tame the highs just a little bit, but apart from that, that's all I really had to do, which is why I've chosen this pre-master, really, because you know there's not an awful lot of work needs to be done to it. I just wanna be able to demonstrate this technique on this pre-master. So starting with the lows, we'll go into air kill EQ on the lows. As you can see, I've killed the high and the mid, and I've just got the lows playing. And I've got the low set up to 300 hertz. And what that basically means is from anything from zero hertz, which we can't hear anyway, up to 300 hertz is gonna be in that first range, that first frequency range of the multiband compressor. So if we, if we were to solo that, for instance, you're just hearing the track from zero hertz to 300 hertz. Let's take that out solo, then onto the mids. In the mids in air kill EQ, I have the highs killed and the lows killed. And we have, if you see how I've set this up here, I've got 4K on the high and 300 Hertz on the low. And what that's doing is, because I've killed that area, it's basically only letting through anything between 300 Hertz and 4K. So now we have our midsection. The lows are gone because I've killed them from 300 down. The highs are gone from 4K upwards because I've killed them. So if we listen to this in solo, you've just got your midsection. 
you get in the, the picture now. So then we go to the highs, and in the highs, you can see I'm only letting the highs through, and it's from 4K upwards. So anything below 4K is, is not gonna be there, basically. So if we just listen to that. So you can hear that's just the highs. So take it out solo, and you're gonna have the lows, the mids, and the highs all together. And that's the, the, how simple it basically is, just by sort of using your brain a little bit and thinking, deconstructing how a plugin might work on your DAW and thinking, how can I work around? How can I make it happen in the MPC? So what can I do with this? You know, this is all very well. I've made this multiband compressor in the MPC. It's a little bit complicated. I have to have three tracks running to be able to do it. So, you know, what, what can you do with it? Now, in this particular case, let's say for instance that, uh, that I wanted to just uh, compress the mid range. I would literally go into the mids and go into the compressor, which is air compressor. So now you can hear, I mean, I've overdone that just to really show you. You can hear that the mid range is now being compressed. It's gluing everything together, but most importantly, I'm not affecting the lows and I'm not affecting the highs. That's really, really good because a lot of the time when you use a wideband compressor, like I explained earlier on, you're gonna start losing the low end. So a way that you would get around that in mastering would be to compress the whole track and then run an EQ after the compressor and bring the low end up again. And that's a workaround that we use, or we, we did use before we had access to multiband compression. So obviously you'll see that I'm, there's some uh, reduction there, so I'd bring up the output. But the, the, what you're doing there, the benefit of that is I'm gluing the mid range and then compensating, so I'm bringing it up again. And what it, what it will appear to do is it will appear to bring the mid range forward. So that's great if you've got full vocal tracks and you have a pre-master or that's the, the, the vocals need bringing out a little bit more in or the mid range the synth leads, whatever they need bringing out a little bit more. And that's what it's really, really useful for. And that's how we use it in mastering and how it's used in mixing as well. So that's a very basic uh, reason that you, you, you would use it. And so something else you can do, let's just crack on, show you different things that we can do. Uh, if we go into the highs, so we've got the track running again. Again, there's no nothing happening now, no compression or anything. We go into the highs and we go into the compressor. And what I can do here is I can, let's say, I mean, the, hat, the hats are a bit crispy on this. So what I actually did when I mastered the track for Steve was I did actually tame the highs a little bit using the Vice DSR, which is a mastering DSR. But with this, I can kind of get pretty close you know it's it, it i was actually quite surprised how decent it sounded and the thing is is that when you're using a compressor to ds or same with the dynamic eq as well is it's a more natural sounding because you're not you haven't just got an eq and you've just taken the tops off and that's going to sound a bit dull but with a compressor multi-band compressor or with a dynamic eq you're only affecting the signal when it actually happens if you if you understand what i mean so if we, if we have, i'll just show you i mean it's So focus on the real high end, the sort of shaker sound that's going on and the hi-hat, the real t -t -t to the hi-hat and the sh -sh -sh kind of to the shaker. And you listen, when I bring it in and out of bypass, it just deadens it slightly. And it deadens it in a really natural way as well, which you wouldn't get if you just EQ'd it or you, you put a shelf on and just dropped it. It's, it's more dynamic and obviously also what you can do when you use this compression, like for instance, with a hi-hat, there's lots going on. I can open up the attack a little bit so I'm letting the transient through and reduce the, the release. So you're still getting kind of nice punchy highs, but you're reducing them, you're DSing the whole track. So just listen, out. It's, I'll push it a little bit further so you can hear it, so it's not so subtle, but it would be something that you would do in a subtle way if you're DSing hats on a track. But if you listen, it's just it's really, really natural. <laughs> Thank you. 
So as you can see from that, it gives you the ability to be able to, uh, you know, I was just compressing the high, the highs um, if I wanted to DS slightly. And let's say, for instance, I wanted to tighten up the low end, but I didn't want to affect the mids and the highs. I could have just compressed the low end. Uh, I had it at 300 hertz, but I could have taken it down to, say, 150 and just compressed from 150 downwards and left the mids and the highs as they were. You know, it just, it, it, if you, as you can see, it starts giving you a lot more control over how you're going to compress a track. It doesn't have to be a whole track. It can be drums. Obviously, the DSing technique can be used on a vocal. You could home in on where the kind of DSing area would be. On a vocal, I'm not going to give you any numbers because obviously it changes completely from each for each vocal is slightly different. But using that technique, you can balance the crossover points to just home in on where the S's would be uh, in a vocal and use it as a DSer. You know, it's not going to be as good as a DSer that you're used to in your DAW, but you know, it, it gets you in the ballpark and it gets you thinking. And that's the most important thing. That's what I'm really trying to get across with this video, especially is if you think out of the box a little bit and think of workarounds and start deconstructing plugins that you're used to using or you've used before or hardware that you've used before and think, how can I do this in the MPC? What workaround can I use? And I mean, for instance, this workaround doesn't have to stop at just using the kill EQ and then using the compressor. You could use the mother ducker and just duck the, the lows or just duck the mid range. You could use uh, a, a reverb and just apply the reverb to the highs if you want that real kind of sizzle and you could spread it out in the mix. That's, that's a technique that we use in mixing quite a lot. You know, really it, it's, it's limitless and, and you wouldn't just have to use the air compressor either. For instance, you could have the kill EQ on the lows, mids and highs and you could change what compressor you used. You could use a VCA if you want more kind of glue. You could use the, the vintage tube style compressor uh, if you were compressing drums and you wanted to uh, compress the low end and use a kind of tube sound but you wanted to use a VCA on the mids and the highs. You know, you don't have to just stick to that one compressor. You know, really think out of the box and it, there's so much that you can do with it just by using these little workarounds and, and deconstruction and that kind of thing. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more mixing, mastering and MPC tutorials and reviews. This is the Crates Motel. My name's Conan. Till next time.